now friends in this journey we we have learned about asanas meditation we have learned about pranayama and breath regulation now the time has come to know about our purpose of life our next speaker is sarah collin registered senior yoga teacher with yoga australia certified dru yoga therapist with ayt registered med meditation teacher with meditation australia ayurvedic lifestyle consultant and she is a transformational life coach so put your hands together and welcome respected sarah collin thank you greetings everybody it's an honor to be here sharing this space with you today i'd like to thank everyone involved firstly for um, organizing this event and it's very much appreciated and acknowledged that it takes many hours of dedication to put all this together, so thank you. I come to you today from the southwest of Western Australia, a place called Australind, and the land of the Noongar people, to whom I extend my deepest respect and gratitude for their guardianship and love of this beautiful country that I call my home. So let's get straight into the topic of yoga and finding life purpose. I get excited about topics like this because it's an opportunity to delve into how the practice of yoga weaves the multifaceted threads of life into our own personal tapestry. And as multidimensional beings, it's my belief that we're here to be beacons of light for our planet and for humanity. That's our purpose. But how do we do that? We could easily talk about the various purposes that we may feel we're here to fulfill. And these can change throughout the course of our life as we take on roles, labels, beliefs and values. But instead, I'd like to suggest that we all land here on purpose. We arrive on this planet already being enough. And it's the layers that start to be put upon us that dull our light and our natural way of being. The layers we start to accumulate through our human daily living from birth and maybe even before. It seems having worked with many women through my work with women's health in community services, as well as 15 years of teaching yoga, that it's easy to lose ourselves as we get caught up in the drama of life. The pressures to choose a pathway, a career that will support us financially, the pressure put upon us by society to keep up appearances. And in that process, we get bogged down in busyness for several years. Life literally begins to pass us by. Yoga, and when I refer to yoga, I'm referring to Patanjali's Eightfold Path, provides us with the most amazing guide. I often hear from people struggling the quote, well, I wasn't born with a manual to guide me through life. And yet some of us have found that manual, that guide to help us navigate back into ourselves, to begin to unblock, uncover, and clear our vision to allow us to see the way that serves us, which is usually the path that helps others as well. So the challenge is to put our yoga practice first and let it guide us. Rather, it seems from numerous stories that I've heard that the first thing that falls off when life gets busy is the practice that will support us the most. It's been my experience that when I use the tools of yoga, and I'm referring to all the eight fold path of yoga, all the limbs of yoga, when I put that first, my way forward is illuminated. When I get overloaded, overwhelmed, and stress starts to increase, the practices that support me the most are the first to go. Suddenly I believe I have no time, I'll walk after I do this, I'll practice after I meet this deadline. And I chase my tail in ever widening circles of dysfunction. 
it's taken me most of my life to realize that putting my yoga practice first, literally from the moment that I wake up, a commitment to engage with nature, to get my bare feet on the earth, connect to the divine in nature and take my yoga out there, my day unfolds in a way that is supported and guided. It is the process of deep trust in the divine that I honour, if I honour the relationship with my higher self, if I can surrender my will to divine will, I honour this precious process of life and life supports me. So as yoga teachers, as yoga participants, I ask why do we let go of the most supporting practices first? And how can we turn this around and help others to do the same? So I asked some of my yoga participants if they'd, they would be willing to write a bit about yoga and purpose for them. And I'd like to share two of those stories with you now because this highlights how yoga can restore us back to wholeness from where we came. So the first um, contribution was from a lady called Sue. And this is what Sue shared. Yoga and meditation have been part of my life for the last two years. After suffering from burnout, which caused acute stress disorder, I was a mess. Through guidance, guidance through yoga and meditation, I have learned to refocus my life in a more relaxed and positive way. Meditation has taught me the importance of breathing correctly and being in the moment. This gentle yoga exercise has helped relieve the stress in my body, allowing my whole body to relax and function as it is wonderfully designed to do. That was from Sue, who's finding a lot of support in the practice of yoga. And this is from a lady called Marion. My journey. Working in a government secondary school in a low socioeconomic area certainly comes with its challenges. We're seeing increasing number of students with low literacy, mental health issues, students who have had trauma in their lives and students with autism, to name just a few. Whilst these challenges are out of my control, it adds to the level of stress in one's working environment. I am an experienced teacher and with over 30 years in the system and the stress of working in this environment over a long period of time has taken its toll on my own mental health and on my physical health. I felt the band-aids of continually taking prescription medication was not addressing the core issues of what I could do to have a balanced mind and balanced body. So in my journey of life, I sought out yoga, in particular Drew Yoga, as a way of addressing the environmental stress that I encountered every day. Yoga has enabled me to release the energy blocks and be in more tune with my mind and body as I continually fine tune it on a daily basis. Recently, there had been a shift in leadership in the department I work. It had become quite dysfunctional and a very toxic environment to be in. I can clearly see this, but sadly in the past, before I started yoga, I'd get caught up in and sucked down into the vortex of this environment, which spiraled me out of control, both mentally and physically. I genuinely believe that the work I've done through yoga, it has cleared my mind and made space to make positive decisions. I know that I have choices and being sucked into the vortex is not an option. I have an inner strength to make changes and remain in a positive mindset. Change can be daunting, but with change comes growth. I knew changing the environment I was working in a way very evident and by putting out the positive energy I had learnt through yoga, I have since gained employment in another school. Reflecting on my yoga journey, I feel more in control of my life as I have a clear sense of mind and inner strength, which has empowered me to be happy with who I am as a person and the ability to block the negative energy from my environment. I am very grateful. That was Marion's story. And so yoga can be profoundly helpful um, in everyday life and in, in our interactions with our environments and people. So can we ask ourselves as a way of coming back and keeping our practice at the forefront? 
What supports me the most? What one thing can I do on a daily basis that will support me through the day? What's the one thing? What supports me the most? And what one thing can I do on a daily basis that will support me through the day? And then prioritize this one thing and put it in your diary as a very important non-negotiable appointment with yourself. Start from here and let this grow into a supporting nourishing practice. I've been recording a podcast series on the Eightfold Path of Yoga and this week we discussed the Niyama of Ishwara Pranadana, experiencing the power of wholehearted dedication. And I believe there are no mistakes in the universe and this topic for today that I was penning was really influenced by this week's podcast topic. It's like the conversation added depth to this topic on yoga and life purpose. It's one of those moments when you're in the flow and things come to you at the time that you need them. So what is the most important aspect to pursue in seeking purpose? To me, it comes back to knowing yourself. It must begin here because if you have no idea who you are or what makes you come alive, you will strive to strive and fail to feel like you have any purpose at all grasping at lifelines from a place of stress and survival as I see so many doing and coming from this place. Yoga has supported me in my life journey for the past 35 years or so and I discovered the benefits in my early 20s in preparation for motherhood. Over the years I have come and gone from yoga as I spent many years in remote regions of northwest Australia and not always having access to yoga in those places or the technology that connects us so easily today. And a little later in 1997, I studied with Self-Realization Fellowship and the work of Paramahansa Yogananda. And this changed my life and remains the steady foundation upon which I live. It's like my rock. People noticed and wanted what I had. So I started looking for a way to teach this, and that's when I discovered Drew Yoga in 2007, which was another life changer for me as I embarked on teacher training. And you know when you're on the right track, when life opens up against all odds and nothing blocks you from pursuing the path that you've been drawn to. Many training modules over many years, traveling interstate several times a year and not once being stopped working full time and being a sole parent to two children, any number of things could have prevented me from completing my numerous courses. Not once was I stopped or hindered in any way. So my conclusion is that when we find something that makes us come alive and feel the inner connection to it being right for us, life opens up if you allow it. If you can get out of the way and surrender almost to the higher knowing that is guiding you because you've started walking a path that is going to support not only you, but so many others. It's like having your inner fire ignited and that drives you and moves you to overcome any obstacles. It's up to us to make meaning of our lives and we make meaning when we dedicate ourselves to taking time to honor what's in our hearts. To honor what's in our hearts is to know ourselves. It's the inner journey. It's our responsibility to find purpose and make meaning of our lives and yoga will guide us there. Take the first step and let the nourishing practice of honoring your heart grow because in putting yourself first to keep your inner fire glowing, you will be a beacon of light to all you meet. And that's what the world needs right now. This precious life deserves your wholehearted dedication. So go within. That's where the answers lie. Let the light from within shine the full expression of your soul. Thank you. Namaste. Thank you very much, uh, 
respected shreya ji for a very inspiring speech for letting us know the purpose of life as you rightly said that in this drama of life it is very much important to resort to some manual of life and that manual is yoga as you said yoga brings purity of mind and stability of mind you also elaborated about tap swadhyay and ishwar pranidhana for tapas you said that we need a whole hearted dedication to know our purpose of life for swadhyay you said that it should be a very important non negotiable appointment with self to know what is the purpose of life for ishwar pranidhana you said that we need to know my will and we need to shift from my will to divine will and knowing ourselves is our purpose of life so that we can reach from humanity to divinity thank you very much uh, 